Welcome. And for me, I have the Shelly Wall Display X2, and I'll be going over unboxing along with just a quick look at the um, home dashboard itself, however you want to call it. So, uh, let's get into this. Uh, this is actually something that I got for my own usage at home. And it's actually going to be the first time I'm seeing this in person, so let's hope for the best. Anyway, we got the display itself. Cool thing about it, it can be mounted um, to a existing wall socket if you have one that you would like to use this in. Or you can also just plug it in through USB-C. Uh, this device only consumes about a single watt. So it should be very easy to drive and without like any problem. Now here you have the, the socket that you would put into your obviously existing wall socket to power this and uh, obviously remove the need to power it through USB-C. Additionally, it also allows you to control your existing lights with it. So that's also an additional benefit, but my lights are all kind of smart in the room. So uh, this is going to be kind of needless. One of the other reasons why I got this specifically is because here we have our little light, oh not light, uh, temperature and humidity sensor, though I'm not sure how well this works. I've seen some like reviews about it and it didn't seem to be very accurate in terms of showing the temperature, but I can't really check it out right now. Uh, I don't have any kind of thermometer right here that, would, uh, that I would know for certain that tells me accurate temperature. So anyway, let's plug it in. And uh, is there like a button somewhere? Anything? Come on. <laughs> Shoot, turn on. At least I, no, oh, oh, I think I just saw something. Hello? Hmm. Weird. There is no buttons all around, so it's not like I can press anything. Not maybe let's try to plug it in with something that pres presumably gives it a little bit more than than five watts, even though this is supposed to only take one. Yeah. Okay, it looks like uh, one is not enough, or five, uh, or maybe the amperage was a little bit different for it to not want to work with it. Now this should have a gyroscope, so I shouldn't need to like flip it, but we'll see in a second once it actually boots up. Now, um, the device uh, comes with a built-in light sensor, microphone, uh, G sensor, whatever that is, proximity sensor, um, humidity, which humidity and the temperature one are right here. So it, it comes with it, but it's not actually like built into the device itself. It's something that you need to uh, have separately paired into, or not into, but to the device itself. And one of the neat features about this is that it comes with a basically out of the box integrated home assistant. This is how I'll be using it primarily through home assistant, but my home assistant isn't set up to be accessible remotely right now. So I can't really do that on the video unfortunately but uh, the device does have its own kind of uh, dashboard right here which I would say looks pretty nice hopefully I can use it without needing to to connect to an application but we'll see in a second uh, loading please wait didn't you just load oh, literally the same thing again so uh, connect ex external sensors uh, do you want to connect to bluetooth whatever devices in your world uh, this will override the internal term blah 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 let's just select no for now okay that's interesting there is a little bit of a of a whine from a processor uh i i I most certainly won't be able, to, or the microphone won't be able to pick that up, like not a single chance in hell. Uh, but I can definitely hear it faintly if I put it like right next to my ear. And I did hear it when it's like, you know, on a table. So this is, I want to remind you, a kind of 
controlled environment right here with relatively quiet. So uh, I have like, you know, mm, padding for sound absorption all around me. Uh, door, so I'm locked in, in my little box right here. Uh, there are some computers like outside of that box, but I can faintly hear them. And I could still hear this, though like I'm very close to it. So it's, if it's on your wall and uh, you have more than like 5x5 five five room, I don't think you're gonna have the slightest chance of even hearing it in like just dead silence. Um, if you're planning to, I don't know, put this right above your bed maybe or something like that, um, somewhere where it's easy accessible when you're getting up, that might be a little bit more annoying if you have like a quiet bedroom and this is right next to you, you actually might hear this whine while you're trying to sleep. And if you're bothered by this, it might not be the best option here. Yeah, it's, it's still there. I was kind of hoping that maybe it would go away after like it loads everything. Now, um, one thing, you can use this dashboard and yep, you can see rotate uh, screen. So we can uh, use it in portrait, landscape, and obviously you can flip it upside down as well. Um, so either one will work. It looks like it automatically uh, changes the layout of everything. So it doesn't like scale it the same way, but just, you know, landscape or portrait. So it resizes the tiles right here to fit a little bit better. So that's pretty nice. So it looks like we have a weather right now here and uh, the other uh, wall display, whatever that was, uh, is right here. So anyway, um, that's about it. Now in the settings, like I mentioned, yeah, you can uh, obviously connect it to Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and all that jazz. Um, and in the settings somewhere, I just don't remember where, maybe general, we have the ability to connect it to Home Assistant. So you just kind of go to the setup of your Home Assistant and it will show up as additional button at the bottom right here, which makes it fantastic uh, as most wall displays like this um, for smart home controls want you to use their own dog shit uh, application. Like for instance, Shelly, uh, Sonoff, uh, Tuya, or some other trash. And this, out of the box, allows you to connect to uh, to Home Assistant. So it's fantastic in this aspect. Most other devices try to kind of stop you from doing this. So most of the Tuyas, from what, I'm, what I've heard, I haven't tested it out, will try to block you from doing this. Just, just because, you know, they want you to use their own dog shit. And let's not beat around the bush to ya from what I've tested is absolute abhorrent shit. There is no going around this. It's just a fact, uh, at least for me, from my experience. Um, so I wouldn't ever want to get a Tuya uh, dashboard like this just because I don't find them reliable. And the fact that they're trying to proactively block me from connecting to Home Assistant now by just making it impossible to connect it normally and having to flash it and then blocking the methods of flashing. Yeah, that's a big L there. Uh, know your place, you trash. Um, and at least allow me to use something that works better than, than the Tuya system. Uh, another one it would have been Sonoff, but as far as I'm aware, when I was looking to purchase either this or the Sonoff, uh, NS Panel Pro, the 121. It's a little bit smaller than this. It looks like actually some of added support for Home Assistant. I could be wrong. I, like I said, I didn't, I just saw some video about it and it looked like it's added by default in there now, which I know where I, when I was looking at it for the first time, like a year back, this is something that I had to like jerry rig to work in there. It was uh, basically uh, ADB commands to get into the uh, Android there and then allow you to access the normal settings and then sideload applications into it. And that would basically allow you to get the Home Assistant working there as, as, the, um, as the kiosk. But uh, it didn't have out of the box support for it. So you needed to kind of do it yourself. But as far as I can tell, it's now out of the box. So that's, that's something that you can look into if you're looking for either one or the other. So the Shelly or the Sonoff. They both seem to have support for Home Assistant out of the box, which obviously will be probably the optimal way of using such a device. Now, anyway, that's about it. Not much to say about it. It's an interesting device, um, obviously for Home Assistant uh, or just smart home controlling. Other than that, it doesn't really serve that much purpose. Uh, it can be used as a light switch, but um, 
if you already have a light switch in your wall, uh, adding a display to it is just kind of, you're spending money for no reason and you don't really get that much versatility from it. So if you have some kind of uh, devices, that's going to be great. Uh, one thing that I also want to point out about this uh, UI right here, the Shelly specific one, is it will work obviously with all Shelly devices and uh, give you any kind of information. So if you have things like the uh, Shelly uh, wall, like sockets thing, thing, things for measuring power and turning it on and off, it will tell you that in here, which is pretty cool feature. Uh, additionally, when you connect it to network, it will tell you the weather and give you some other controls. Maybe you have like some shell cameras or whatever. Those will appear here as well. Uh, so it's a well usable device on its own. You don't need home assistant if you're thinking about it uh, in this kind of aspect. It can be used, but from as far as I know, you can only use it with uh, shelly devices. So I wouldn't be able to, for instance, connect my uh, non shelly lights like smart light bulbs to this just because they're just not shelly. What I could instead do is just plop in their, uh, their like smart switch for the, for the power into connection that goes to the lights and control it that way. Uh, but then that removes things like the brightness controls and a light uh, or color control of my lights, which obviously not very optimal. And anyway, uh, that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.